Hi everyone, Pastor Chris Carlson here again from Westfield Presbyterian Church. Day five of my devotions on my sermon from July the 26th, When the Lions Roar, Daniel chapter 6. The famous story of Daniel in the lion's den. I said there were two amazing uh, outcomes of this story. Uh, the first was justice for Daniel. But the second is what happened uh, through the story itself. We might ask, and I think rightly so, why would God allow yet another threat to Daniel's life? Here was a faithful man. Uh, shouldn't he have it a little easier than he did? Well, the lesson of that is it's never easy. The Son of God himself was crucified we should not expect anything less as believers. So trouble will come if you are a believer in one form or another. But again, we might ask, well, why? Uh, why did Daniel have to face this trial? Once again, here he's 80. He's already had it happen several times. Uh, and God has come through, of course, but yet again, he must be faithful. And so why? Well, I think you have to look back to understand what happened. Now, first and foremost, Daniel and the lion's den, that story has been repeated for 2,500 years. There are people who recognize that story who have never picked up a Bible because uh, it has been repeated over and over again. And I, I realize that sometimes the details are, in the story are lost. People don't, they just, but they, do know the story. Daniel in the lion's den. It's been repeated for 2,500 years about how God saved Daniel and how Daniel was faithful to the end. And it will be repeated until Jesus comes back. Uh, so that's, that's why sometimes things happen. In fact, Paul says in Galatians, he says, these things were written for us that we might learn by what happened to these people and what they did. This story is for us. It's for all of us who have followed afterwards. But even more, there's something else that happened. Daniel was 80 years old. Darius uh, would be followed by a man named Cyrus. And Cyrus issued a decree to allow the children of Israel, the people of Israel, to go back to Judah. You remember Nebuchadnezzar came to Jerusalem actually three times. And the last time he came, he destroyed the temple and the whole city and took them into exile. And everyone thought that would be it. But a promise was issued uh, in Jeremiah that God would bring the people back it was a prophecy. And Daniel had a hand to hand in this. So all the things that happened to Daniel served to uh, build him up. And so he was appointed a second command in the kingdom and had tremendous influence. So Cyrus knows all this. And when the request is to send the people, allow the people to go back, he issues a remarkable decree, things that the kings never really did, uh, because if you sent an enemy back to their kingdom, they might become an enemy again. But it is a miracle. God, through this, uh, uh, these people did it. Now, what's the miracle here? Well, certainly when God saved Daniel from uh, the lions, it was a miracle. It was a flash of light, if you will. But this miracle of sending the children of Israel back, uh, sending the, uh, the Israelites back to Judah and in the end to rebuild the temple, that was a miracle that in some sense happened throughout Daniel's life. His whole life was a miracle. And the result of that life were, were many, many things, many wonderful things that we won't hear about until we get to heaven. But the main thing, and I believe Daniel had a huge hand in it, was the bringing back of the Israelites 
to Judah and in the end to rebuild the temple and for them to be there in that land. And of course, ultimately, it is there that Jesus is born. And that would have not happened had Daniel not lived and uh, had all that influence and all those things that happened to him that showed that God was the true God. And so um, when it, it happens, Cyrus also issues a dec decree that the God of Israel is the true God. Remarkable, amazing. It was a miracle. And part of that miracle was Daniel's whole life. And when we look at our lives, we need to think not just of the little bits of what God does, but the whole, in the whole of history among God's people uh, and what God is doing. Uh, it's looking at it in terms not of days or hours, but of months and years and decades and indeed centuries. And we see God's hand in it all. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for that you are God and uh, you use people like Daniel uh, over a whole lifetime and Daniel submitted to that. He could have fretted his whole life about not being able to go home. But what he did was, is he bloomed where he was planted and he was your servant. Thank you for that and help us do the same. We pray in Jesus' name.